All right, I get a lot, a few people, not a lot, but a few people have asked me about getting mail as a nomad. Like, how does that even work? Um, and there's a couple of answers, and some of you guys know some of these answers, <laughs> um, because the simplest one is obviously getting a post office box. Um, now, the obvious problem with a P.O. box is a P.O. box looks like a P.O. box. Like, it says P.O. box and then usually some sort of number. But that's actually not your only option. Also, you need to recognize there's a distinction between paper mail and packages. Um, one is a little more common and also a little more cheaper to take care of in some respects. And the other one, it can be a little bit more complicated. Because um, the thing with a lot of paper mail is you just need the text. And there are a lot of options for, you know, the things that are just like text-based. Because you may not even need to see it. Um, you may just be able to get a scan of it. And there are services that do that. Um, without ever putting your hand on the physical copy. Also, the scope of the world has changed so that you can make a lot of bills, di bill, uh, words, <laughs> uh, bills digital as opposed to having to actually put your hands on a piece of paper in order to pay them. Um, all right, um, so I just picked up this package, which is the last thing I need to sort of finish up with the van here. I'm not gonna get into that right now because you'll get to see this in a separate video, tease. Um, so for this video, I wanna talk about, so I just got this um, from the mailroom at OSF. So what I have is what's called a private mailbox or PMB. Um, it kind of works the exact same way as a P.O. box. I went to a mailbox company, I signed up for a mailbox, I pay a rent on that mailbox, but the rent is just for the mailbox, which is of course way cheaper than paying for, you know, a full blown address. Um, so that's how I personally have uh, the address I use most of the time. Now, there are times this will register as a private mailbox, even though it appears on paper, just like, cause I can just put um, my, my box number is an apartment number and it's a completely legit way to do that. I can just put also just put number, the number symbol, I can put uh, apartment or I can put PMB and then the number and all of those methods work and then my address is the address of the business that has the the box. <laughs> um, UPS stores work the same way and they also sell mailboxes and again you just go to the UPS store you tell them you're interested in getting a box um, you pay for the box and then you go to that box and you check your mail. Um, now this, while you're static in your home state works really well, but let's say you're not going to be in your home state for weeks or months at a time. Um, well, in most cases, and this is what I do to get little packages like this is I call up my mailbox company. I say, Hey, you know, do I have any mail? They'll tell me if I have mail. Um, in my case, with my box service, I they'll even tell me who the mail's from. I can even consent for them to open up the envelopes and tell me what's in them, depending on how I'm feeling about that. I just told them to forward me my mail. Um, and they, they'll provide all of those services. Now, depending on who you get your, your mailbox services from, there may be charges associated with certain things. There's also like virtual mailbox companies. Again, these are only good for paper mail. Right now I'm just talking about paper mail. Um, we're in same process. You usually can find them online. Um, they receive all your paper mail and then they scan it and then you can just get your mail that way. And that's assuming there are no hiccups where you need to get your hand on a physical copy of mail. So that's another way to handle paper mail. That's not a way I do it, but I know that it's another way that's out there. So basically you have your PO box, private mailbox company. This includes UPS stores, which is one of the most common ones because it has a real address. Um, and by real address, I don't mean like there are times it won't it, it will flag as a non-residential address, but it appears on paper in 95, if not 98% of situations, as an actual real address. Like it has a number, it has a street, and usually you can uh, put your box number as an apartment number. The numbers are also usually shorter. Post office box numbers are sometimes really long. Um, whereas if you go to a UPS store or any sort of private mailbox location, 
uh, your box numbers are usually shorter, so they look a little bit more like an apartment number and a little less like a P.O. box number. Now, some P.O. boxes, I don't know if it's all yet, do allow you to use real addresses. In that case, again, the street address would be the address of the post office, and then um, you could put number or apartment number as your box number. But this isn't true across the board, and you would need to check with your post office location to be sure. I prefer um, to go to small little mailbox companies. Um, they're usually, they usually provide more services for less of a cost, depending on how much you're going to be traveling. If you're going to be mostly static, if there's not a situation where you won't be near, near your mailboxes for extended periods of time, um, then, uh, it may not matter. Just go with the, the cheapest thing you can get. Um, if you're going to be like in your town or very close to your town, at least not separated from your mailbox where you'll have to do forwarding. All right, so let's talk about forwarding, which is the situation I'm in now. I've been in Oregon going on, what, three months now, and my mailbox company is in California. So again, kind of touched on this. I call them up. I say, do I have any mail? They tell me yes or no. I can ask them how much. I can say just forwarded. I can say, like, can you tell me who it's from? There's a plethora of questions I can ask. Or I can say, you know what, just pack it in an envelope, which is what I normally do, and forward it to me. And that's all they do. Now, what I did before I left is I left them a deposit. And what that deposit covers is the postage to send this to me. Um, the deposit just sits there. So if you were traveling long term, a way you could use a service like this is like when they were, and if, when you're signing up for a mailbox service, if it's not like, um, the, even if it's the post office or the UPS store, cause I'm not sure hundred percent how they work, but they probably also provide these services. You can ask them how their mail forwarding would work. Um, so yeah, so basically that's, that's what you would do you would ask for them to send you your mail they'll bundle up all your mail and then they'll send it to you and the deposit i left with my mailbox company is then paying for the postage to forward my mail um so you just need to know what fees are associated that like if you know you're going to be on a trip for like i don't know a few months um or you're going to be moving around all the time or whatever your situation is that's just a cost you need to assess and it'll take care of your paper mail usually quite easily you might run into some situations where they're like this is not a residential address we need your residential address i'm not going to address that particular situation in this video but for like probably like 98 percent of your needs a private mailbox company or a mailbox company or a UPS store address or something like that will work and it's just a service you can literally look up private mailboxes or virtual mailboxes online um, I honestly found mine's driving and I was like oh hmm, there's a little mailbox company let me give this this a shot and honestly it's mostly worked out so that's how I get my paper mail and like I said if I open this envelope I'm not gonna go through my mail right now Now the thing about um, having a private mailbox or a mailbox service, and that, like I said, all of my, I don't want you guys to see all of my mail, but all of my paper mail is in here, um, is you have to be very conscious of, you know, checking in on your mail. Uh, you don't want your mailbox overrun um, because some mailbox companies will charge for that. I personally have a small mailbox. It can take paper mail. Packages cannot fit in my mailbox. When I am in my home state, what usually happens is they put a note in my private mailbox and they're like, hey, you have packages. I am supposed to pick up those packages ideally within a couple of days of those arriving. And I'll get into that into the package part. But that's another thing you want to verify if you decide to use a mailbox company is do they take um, packages? Are there fees associated with that and how getting packages work? Also, because I have a small mailbox, if I get a certain excess of, of packages, I'm required to upgrade my mailbox so that it can handle a lot of packages. I cannot keep the, there's a certain amount of packages where they're happy to do the slips, but if it goes over a certain number, then I would have to pay an upcharge for a larger box. Um, and I guess that's a really good seg segue into packages. 
Um, so handling packages when you're on the road or when you're static. When you're static, um, it's a little bit easier. I mean, one of the best ways to get large packages, honestly, if you are near a friend, rather you're static or on the move, is a friend's house. Um, if there's somebody local to where you are who has an address and you, you, as long as you're not overwhelming them with packages like every other week, like if it's one, let's say your solar panel blows off the top of your camper and so you need a replacement so, uh, uh, solar panel and you're in, I don't know, Wyoming and you have a friend in Wyoming. Well, honestly, the easiest thing for you to do is call up your friend in Wyoming and be like, hey, I need to replace my solar panel. I can order one from Amazon. Um, but I need an address to send it to. And so friends' houses are really good in those situations, but you definitely don't want to overwhelm. You're, you're basically calling in a favor, so you don't want to overwhelm friends with getting your packages. Um, there are places that will accept mail for travelers. So depending on your situation, and the best thing to do is ask, ask locally if there are any places that will accept packages for travelers. Um, so that would be your first step is like ask the locals, um, ask, ask other campers, ask around, especially if you're in a situation with other travelers or campers, ask them if there's any place that can receive packages for you. If you're like on a campground or in some sort of official situation where you've paid for a spot, there's more than likely some place that you can send packages to or an address where you can get packages and pick them up if you need to get them. Um, obviously, a lot of travel YouTubers are getting Amazon packages while not living in their home states and home addresses. And so this is a fairly common thing to do. There are stores that will accept packages. Amazingly, there are local stores that will accept, accept packages in your area, but it's really hard to find these without asking around, asking locals, or asking other travelers. Another thing you can do is sort of forward things to your local post office. Um, there is a method for this. I've forgotten all the details, but you can easily go to like a local post office and ask them as well. Be like, hey, I need to ship a package. Do you guys accept packages here? What is the process? And so that is completely obviously available to you. In the case of Amazon specifically, Amazon has a lovely thing called the Amazon Locker. And with the Amazon Locker, you can literally, while you're ordering your packages, send it to a locker instead of sending it, you know, to a home address or an alternate address or the post office. They already have lockers pre-set up. Now, the thing about Amazon Lockers is it does not take large packages. So usually, like with large and heavy items, Amazon Locker is not possible now there are special situations there's a there's a place on a college campus back in california where they do receive packages that are a little larger but in general amazon is for smaller packages not for like larger ones um and so if you want to use an amazon locker not amazon you can get large stuff from amazon but if you're getting large stuff from amazon that's when you want to call in a friend or see if where you are there is some place to ship packages now obviously if you're boondocking in the middle of nowhere there's not like an office you can go to unlike when you're on like a legit campground where there might be somebody you can ask um but amazon locker is a really good for small packages um i use amazon locker a lot so that if there is a month i might exceed the amount of packages my mailbox company is willing to accept which happens rarely because I don't have money like that, then I can use the Amazon locker to make sure I'm not over -tax taxing my mailbox company with packages. Um, speaking of the mailbox company, and I'm not sure if this is true with the UPS store, it might also be true with them as well. Um, with packages specifically is where things get complicated because you have, with paper mail, it's usually coming from the United Postal Service. Um, and you can get that delivered almost anywhere, forwarded almost anywhere, it's all kind of interconnected. When you get into packages, you have the regular postal service, you have UPS, you have FedEx, and then you have a bunch of little alternate services like DHL and stuff like that. 
um, and certain places won't accept packages from other places so if you do have a private mailbox um, through a specific company you should probably check what packages they accept are there any packages they won't accept um, with PO boxes and I have shipped packages to a PO box and it kind of worked just like the mailbox I have now I had a PO box a long time ago when I was between addresses in Maryland and same thing when i got a package i got a slip in my box and then i had to take that slip over to the the counter and then they would give give my package to me but there was iffiness about fedex and ups packages if they had to go to the p.o box um i don't know how much that's changed because i don't have a p.o box currently so that's something you want to investigate um but that's where things can get a little bit complicated because there there it might be like they only accept like the United States Postal Service and UPS, or it might be just the Postal Service and FedEx, or it might be, you know, just this, that thing or the other thing. It might just be the, the United States Postal Service and not other delivery companies. And so you need to verify what will be accepted and what can't be accepted when you're deciding on your postal box. Now, if you're like, you know, my mom can accept all my packages for me, but I don't want to bog her down with my paper mail, it might be that your paper mail is going to your P.O. box, but your packages you you have another method for, which might be like going to your mom's house or your friend's house or your cousin's house or, for, or whatever. Um, so let me see, what have I talked about with packages? So there's uh, Amazon Locker, there's Friends, there's uh, the, you know, uh, forwarding it to your mailbox service. Um, so yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. <laughs> Those are sort of your methods for getting packages and asking, you know, asking about local package receiving from either other travelers or like the campground you're staying at, or if you're not staying at a campground and you're just boondocking, you know, wild camping in the middle of somewhere, sort of like maybe going into town, asking stores, you know, just asking around. And a lot of being nomadic is putting yourself in new situations. So if you're not comfortable asking around for a solution, uh, you may not find it because people always find surprise. They'll find like, oh, the, you know, the Rite Aid, you know, down the street will accept packages and then they can get their packages that way. But if you don't ask around, you're not going to know these things without honestly plain old asking. Oh, and then there's the one I've talked about. This is my third video talking about it. Ship to store. This is the thing, and it's, it works just like Amazon Locker. If you are, you know, in, like right now I'm in Ashland, Oregon. Um, maybe I need something from Home Depot, and it's only on Home Depot online. Well, I can get that a lot of times shipped to the store, and then I just go to the store and pick it up. And so, like, obviously I'm in a situation right now where because of the job I was hired for, I can ship it to the job and then I can get my packages from the job. Um, but if you're not in that situation and you need your packages like shipped somewhere, ship to store also works. Um, and I've also used that, you know, a lot. I've used ship to store so much. And again, this cuts down on the amount of packages that are going through my private mailbox, which is great. But again, they don't want to be flooded with packages. My mailbox is mostly there for paper mail. Um, if they were flooded with packages all the time, like their little mailbox company would be overrun. Um, and that's why they want people who expect, you know, a reasonable amount of packages to pay for larger mailboxes. And I mostly got that mailbox for paper mail. So I definitely don't try to exploit it for um, other uses. So I think that's about it. Paper mail and uh, packages are separate, uh, different. Um, paper mail is a little bit easier to take care of. There are so many options for that, including virtual mailboxes where you never even receive the paper mail. Like people just get your mail and they scan it and you can go open it. Um, if you just want to get your traditional mail forwarded to you, you just send it to the private mailbox or the, the post office box or whatever it is. And then you call them up and you say, I'm here, send it to that address. As far as finding that address so that it reaches you, that's something you have to ask questions about. You have to look around you. You have to find out what your resources are. are. The post office is a resource. Like if you know you're going to be in, you know, Tennessee for three weeks, go to the closest post office to where you are and ask questions. And even they will usually have an answer for you. Like the lady might be like, oh, sorry, we can't accept FedEx packages. But if you go to this place over here, you could probably like, 
you send it there or there might be small fees associated with some of these but that's just part of the lifestyle if you just want to to not travel you know and be home and have your mail come traditionally that's just the way it is the tricky thing is also like when you live in a house or an apartment or whatever and you order things and they're coming to your house you don't have to think about going to get them um they're just they're just coming exactly to where you are and you just got to sit around and things will trickle in the thing about using any kind of service is you have to be hyper aware of when you have stuff coming or how long it's been since you've checked your mailbox and I fall into this trap all the time it'll be like three weeks and I was like oh I should probably go check and see if I have some mail which can get you in some tr trouble because sometimes things are time sensitive and you don't get to, to them in enough time um, so you sort of have to become more conscious about checking things depending on like what's important at the time um, it's, you know, it's 2020. Most of my bills are, are digital. So there's not a lot of fear there, but sometimes things happen like, um, you know, you lose your credit card. And so you need to call a credit card company. You need to get a new credit card or a new bank card. And so you're very hyper aware of that needing to get to you physically. And those situations can become a little bit more complicated if you're not in your home state um, or you're traveling. Um, but you know, if you're if you're static and you're working, but you just happen to be, you know, using a, a box, then you just have to be conscious of like, oh, I should probably make this a habit, like every two weeks or every week, or set myself in a reminder because it's not going to show up, you know, at your van <laughs> or your RV or whatever in the middle of nowhere. Like that's not gonna happen and it's not gonna show up in you know the parking lot you're napping in. So you have to like be very aware and very conscious and be thinking about um, setting a pat pattern for this stuff. Um, and that's what can make it you know a little bit more of a personal responsibility thing. But as far as getting an address to mail stuff too, it's honestly not that hard. All right, see you in the next video. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters. You really keep this channel going.